the final uh, indication that I'd like to briefly mention is epilepsy. Uh, as you know, uh, epilepsy is uh, often treatable with pharmacological therapies. If they've got a definite seizure focus, you can either remove the temporal lobe, the mesial part of the temporal lobe, or you can remove an epileptogenic uh, tumour or vascular malformation. But there are a significant number of patients that have epilepsy uh, that don't seem to have a well-defined epileptogenic focus and that don't respond to pharmacological therapies. And it's thought that these patients might be suitable for deep brain stimulation. These are essentially the same patients that got the vagal nerve stimulators, uh, which offer some patients a good benefit, but probably uh, don't give as good a, a benefit as we would hope. So there have been a number of trials conducted, but the, the main trial is the Sante trial, which looked at bilateral anterior thalamic nucleus deep brain stimulation. They had over 80 participants. These patients had uh, generalized seizures, which had partial onset. So they, they had medically refractory seizures. They had a good um, uh, median uh, follow-up of 31 months, and they found that 60% of the patients experienced at least a 50% reduction in their baseline seizure uh, rate, and the median seizure frequency was reduced by two-thirds. So this was very uh, encouraging, and there are now a number of centres starting to look at this um, for, for the treatment of epilepsy. We've only done one patient uh, just because of the referral patterns. Uh, this uh, patient was done... Uh, about two and a half years ago now, uh, and he had Dravet syndrome, which is a uh, myoclonic epilepsy that comes on during infancy. He had very he had a range of intractable seizures. It was very hard to to, to generalise and, and work out exactly which types of seizures he had. But he basically had every type of seizure that you could have. Um, he had vagal nerve stimulation, which uh, gave him a very modest benefit. And so he decided, or his family decided with him, that he would go down the path of deep brain stimulation. So we did intraoperative EEG monitoring, and what we found was that we could uh, modulate his EEG patterns as we stimulated, um, uh, particularly uh, as we went out of the anterior thalamic nucleus and into the uh, mediodorsal nucleus, we lost the ability to modulate his EEG. And he had a fairly dramatic effect in terms of his uh, seizure frequency. But the thing that I noticed the most was that when he came back to see me in the rooms, when I saw him preoperatively, because he was having so many seizures, he was very, very drowsy. He just had this ongoing electrical activity. He was just falling asleep in the chair. Um, but when he came back post-op, he was, he was quite alert. So that was, that was probably the thing that I noticed more than the seizures than, themselves. So. Mm -hmm.